What's happening everyone? It's your boy Hardcorn, and today we're going to be reviewing Akiyama Rinko. Let's go in and see what makes this big grape a favorite within the player base. Rinko is an interesting character. She's bound by duty and also to those she cares for. This girl works hard at everything she does and excels quite well. She's got a variety of skills she can do like cooking, making pastries and desserts, various custodial tasks, and also being a ninja. That little ninja part though is inconsequential to her ability and being an efficient maid. She's a real working girl. Anyways, she takes her ninja work very seriously and most of the time will be working together with her lifelong friend, Yukikaze. Those gals are inseparable, for better or worse. Rinko first appeared in Taimon and Yukikaze and its following sequel. Afterwards, she's been a very much a fan favorite and is treated well in terms of merchandise and appearances in the spin-off games and content. She's a bit peculiar to me as I can see that her artist, Aoi Nagisa, was tasked to create Asagi 2 but make it like it's her younger days. The artist accomplishes this for sure. I can see the design motifs and then when the story elements come together it sort of works out. Of course, she's an Asagi clone but with that Aoi Nagisa flair. It doesn't take too much looking to see where the changes were, and I'm glad to see such an improvement. Yes, she surpasses Asagi by using a bigger sword and a spatial ninja art, rather than just win. You ever hear about the concept of space folding? It's a method of sci-fi travel where the start and the finish of the trip coincide with each other and makes the travel instantaneous. That's Rinko's Void Art. She uses it to teleport herself and other objects to and from locations. Obviously, it's a very powerful skill that she makes use of like child's play. Alongside that, she has a deep understanding of the Ito style. It's a swordsmanship technique that's been passed down for generations in her family. She takes such knowledge of the blade and meshes it with her Void Art ability. It's constantly apparent in her skills and especially in her ultimate. Swinging a big sword around is tiresome for even the strongest of anime swordsmen. Hence, she has a slower swing speed compared to some of the game's smaller weapons like daggers and swords. But being the smart gal she is, she's found ways to circumvent the weight and size of her weapon of choice. To conserve her energy, she's the type of character to place her attacks at choice moments. Her void art takes its toll on her the longer she uses it. So what's that mean? She's a bursting character, and she's got the tools to properly accomplish this. Her normal attack string is a series of medium speed slashes with a flurry of slashes for a finisher. Girls straight up judgment cuts like she's frickin' Virgil. They're both stoic samurai characters, so there's gonna be a lot of parallels. Her slashes have little knockback, which is perfect because her ability to chase with her attacks is minimal during her combo. Outside of a combo, she can actually buffer portions of her attack string because each and every slash homes in incredibly hard to the target. Buffering them is somewhat important because when she's attacking enemies, she covers her entire front with those enormous slashes. However, that also means she's incredibly vulnerable from the sides and back. One hit during the string takes her out of it completely. What's even worse is that the wind-up to the finisher is just her standing completely still and slashing. I've been hit quite a few times in the back or taken a gunshot that knocks me completely out of it. You can dash out of it, along with most of the attack string, and that's incredibly great, but it also means you'll never use that AoE judgment cut to shred up a group of enemies, unless you buffered, of course. There has to be a way to accomplish it consistently, because it's a really big source of damage. Now let's get into the core skill, what really makes it so that she can burst so incredibly hard. Because with burster type characters, there's always something or someone to enable their habit. In Rinko's case, it's her skill, Spatial Rift. She activates this fantastic skill on an extreme dodge, and it pulls in enemies towards the cast location. With two greens, she gets a 20% bonus to movement speed, two blues is particle charged increased by 3%, and two reds increases the duration of the rift by 50%. Through the usage of this rift, it enables Rinko to start doing mountains of damage in a very short amount of time. It vacuums up packs and gives them a pseudo stun with how strong the pull is. Now that the enemies are pulled in together, she can start doing what she does best. The window is small, so you'll need to do moves that have an instant cast or allow her to move very quickly afterwards. She can rain down a meteor to flatten the whole pack in one shot. She can use Mugen Hoei to turn into a sort of missile launcher and zap the crowd. She can use Wind Slice to blast through the pack and then unleash a whole Kocho Ranbu to just go full slay all onto him. Her options open way up the moment she can drag enemies together. There's even supporters that do the vacuum effect too so she can have a sort of emergency version of that skill at her demand if she wants. Most importantly, 
it groups the enemies together and allows Rinko to do her whole basic attack string uninterrupted. Spatial Rift truly defines a core skill, an enabler of style, and you're severely gimped without it. From that point on, there's a lot of choice you can have. It feels like almost it's a, like a real game and how you want to take combat and accomplish the smiting of your enemies. Because after that Spatial Rift drops, it's go time. Your enemies will have no chance, however, bosses don't feel the effect so much. They'll walk out of it. The rest of her skills I wouldn't say they're core, but there are some staples that get used a lot. One of which is Wind Slice. Wind Slice is her speedy samurai slash that has an enormous AoE and a lot of hits. Its usage is extremely straightforward because it's the only way it can go. With 3 greens, it reduces the enemy's defense by 30% for 15 seconds, 3 greens makes enemies groggy on hit, and 3 reds adds 2 consecutive slashes. While 3 greens is incredibly strong in terms of softening up the enemies, Rinko doesn't have a lot of synergy with other colors. Wind Slice making enemies groggy is a really good effect since it's the same stun state as depleting the super armor meter. It won't affect enemies with the super armor meter, but it does a good job at holding enemies in place that don't have these meters. This attack is something you do moments after all the enemies have been sucked into the rift, they'll get hit a ton, and hopefully a few crits come out of it. The hit count also makes this skill work due to the many chances for it to crit. It's a workhorse of a skill, and is also the staple of many of Rinko's builds. Not as much of a signature though, as dropping a meteor. Rinko pulls a huge meteor from the depths of space at a moment's notice to drop onto a group of enemies. Now this is what finishers strive to be. It's a big, high impact, high damage move that will either kill anything that's up against it or severely maim whatever is in her way. With one blue, it increases the meteor's size and makes it a large AoE instead of a small. Two makes the meteor knock down on impact and three gives it a 150% damage boost. This is a move you either start with or finish a fight with. It'll soften up the enemies or just flat out delete them. Either way, it's probably Rinko's best nuke. I mean the thing is a WMD with how hard it hits. Even without a crit, it will most likely kill anything. And when it does crit, they'll just evaporate. A sort of peace through power moment, if you will. I mean, you can't get hurt if they're not there, right? However, with this skill having a base cooldown of 16 seconds, it sets the pace of bursting. At max cooldown reduction skill training, it puts that at 11.2 seconds. Still an amount of time to wait for all the skill damage cylinders to fire off since many of Rinko's other skills have lower cooldowns. Small optimizations for the big finish. In terms of optimization, one thing to never go without on Rinko is her time in an art, Ito style Ichi no Kata. It adds 30% more damage to her normals and 50% more particle charge using normal attacks. It's good filler and just good to have around in the first place. Not only is it strength, but it takes out the shortcoming of the normal attack string with how slow it is. The time in an art speeds it way up so it should never really be left out. However, even with such speed power-ups, it still doesn't speed up the finishing slash enough to avoid hits. You gotta buffer it, or you just gotta dash out on the fourth hit. The art benefits this sort of dash out method because it increases the damage and particle charge, so your DPS and particles aren't so anemic. It's getting so anemic, since you're not using that big multi-hit finisher, which is a direct injection of particles, even if it hits one enemy. The whole string is important from beginning to end. The time in an art, though, makes it so that you'll be able to accomplish it more often than not. With the cores and the sort of staples out of the way, let's get to the other skills and see if they can help Rinko burst. Starting with Ito style Arashi no Kata, it's a similar situation to many of the game's first skills for almost all the girls. It knocks up the enemy into the air for a few slashes or strikes, then smacks them into the earth. One green reduces the cooldown by 20%, one blue increases the damage by 25%, and one red adds the Helm Splitter finisher. It's standard fare, and doesn't see too much use when you start getting your big core skills. For niche builds, maybe. But the slow setup and hanging in the air doesn't bode well for a fast moving, technical, bursting character. Ito style Kade no Kata has Rinko teleport above the target's head and come crashing down to do damage with also an AoE. While it's a very simple skill on paper, it has a few interesting attributes about it. The main green knocks down an enemy, having a main blue recovers 5% of given damage, and a main red gives a 15% boost to movement speed. Unfortunately, this skill doesn't knock down normally because that would make it too good. 
Instead, it gives hit stun and through blue, HP recovery. There's really no reason to run anything but blue with this. I mean, it's their only HP recovery option, and it's just dandy. I mean, Rinko can stay in the fray for longer, just like the best of them. It really goes to show just how much a simple thing, like recovering HP, can make a difference in longevity, and in some cases, likability. This also being an AoE skill means she can recover huge amounts of HP at once through critting and packs of mobs. Recovery skills are a godsend in the tower, as some of these fights get dangerous, last a while, or both. We're not all perfect, so we're bound to get hurt. Also goes to show that a mediocre skill with healing can make all the difference. This skill's healing being on the blue gives me some ideas on how things are to be built with her. Kocho Ranmu is her big slay all attack. Charging up for a moment, she then unleashes a flurry of slashes, then finishes with a final cut to give some big damage. It's an all red skill, with one red adding three more attacks, 2 adds a knockback at the end of the skill, and 3 increases critical damage by 250%. It's a pretty legit skill and I've got no qualms against it. It does what it says on the tin. I don't like the idea of having to run 2 or 3 reds to see any sort of benefit out of it, due mostly because her red effects on other skills are just pretty mediocre. However, Mugen Hoei is a different story. Rinko charges up and shoots little homing lightning balls that explode. Unpowered, they're pretty mediocre, and have a degree of travel time. It's Rinko's triple green skill, and it takes some real investment to see some use. One green makes two more lightning balls, two makes it have knockback on impact, and three gives it a whopping 50% increase to critical rate. Each ball hits twice, so it's totally possible to burst with this skill. This is a real great item for kiting enemies, since it's set and forget technology. Also, since the triple green gives such a huge boost to crits, it's a great pair with Rinko's 81 skill, Violet Slash. You'll also already have a lot of greens, so you'll get that massive critical damage boost. A pretty underrated skill probably due to such a deviation from the tried and true, and also a very large investment all the way to 81, to make it so that she can become a missile silo for a few seconds. This is also a casted skill, so she's gotta sit there for a moment to fire them. She's all about warping and moving quick, so it's a bit out of character. Well. It's a bit out of character for a blue, but it's turning over a new leaf when she goes green. Now the shift is great. It's Rinko's double dash skill, but the greatness comes in that it's incredibly fast. It's one of those where I'm left underwhelmed from other characters double dash skills, and that they gotta cast something or they don't do any damage. It's a rainbow skill, but each color is very nice. Two greens gives a 10% attack up for 5 seconds. Two blues reduces damage taken by 25% for 7 seconds, and two reds stuns the enemy. This is on an 8 second cooldown and it'll come in later. The fact this skill happens so incredibly fast means you can open with this skill. It also means if you can get your timing right, you can get off spatial rift with the first press of dash, and then activate the shift with the second press. It's a bit of a setup, but it also means you can have your buff on and ready going into a burst and all the enemies will be sitting ducks. If you're 81, you can even then add in the Violet Slash at the end for the bonus damage. With the cooldown, it can be lowered to 5.6 seconds. You can keep the buffs up indefinitely, and use it nearly every other combo. Also to note that it wouldn't put her specifically behind an enemy on its usage. It zips her right in whatever direction she's facing. This is a little downer, as it's not as good as Asagi's little double dash skill, in that Asagi's exploits the enemy's turning, while Rinko goes in deep for that hit of damage. You don't use this skill to clear a pack, you use it to buff yourself, so you can clear it faster. After a long bout of resource collection and upgrading, when Rinko reaches level 81, she unlocks Violet Slash. After a skill or her normal attack string finishes, she can press dodge and then slash right on through the target for a finisher. It's all on a 1 second cooldown so it's ready when you are. With 2 greens she gets a 50% increase to critical damage for 7 seconds, 2 blues is a 10% damage increase for 7 seconds, and 2 reds reduces enemy speed by 100% for a second. Violet Slash is a buffing skill alongside it being the finisher she should have had in the first place. And personally, it really should have been her time in an art. However, as much of a downer of what could have been, it brings the boost to the party with three very powerful statuses. Green giving the extremely valuable 50% boost to crit damage is almost worthy of running green. Crit chance boosting is a common thing, but crit damage outside of Magatama polishing rolls or monocolor builds is very rare. Rinko goes above and beyond with a 50% boost on near zero cooldown. 
With Rinko's attacks having many hits and many chances to crit, she just continues to burst harder and harder. Even going with traditionalist blue, she gets essentially a permanent 10% damage buff. It's a straight DPS increase to her since it can be added to every one of her attacks. I'd even call it core if it wasn't so deep into Rinko's leveling and most would never see it for a long time, but I'll tell you, it'll be worth the wait. Rinko has very little applicable debuffs and she's a melee attacker. She's also human and relies on hitting her big skills. These are the stipulations and it's time to build around that. Let's look at different colors of supporters and make some setups. Let's take a look at a few notable greens. Rinko has forms of crit boosting, so she'll want more of that and also crit damage up. Desirable one for sure, and really on anyone, is Tekke and Kaoru. Kaoru boosts crit damage at level 1 by 24%, and at max, it's 48%. That's incredibly huge on just about anyone, so she's very much a desirable summon. Rinko's attacks that have multiple hits can crit multiple times, so anything that can take that damage further is perfect. Kaoru also gives an important effect on usage. She chains all enemies for a moment, which is perfect for getting Rinko in close to slice them up. Kaoru is a green supporter and is a permanent in the standard gacha. Sakuragi Saruga is another supporter to look out for. Her sub skill increases crit rate and crit damage, so it's a very welcome support to Rinko, along with anyone who wants to do big damage in small packages. At base, she's an 8% increase to crit chance and a 16% increase to crit damage. A very welcome addition if you do or don't have Kaoru. Kasahara Tatsumi is a good supporter to have due to the general purpose she serves. Her sub skill gives the character increased damage to demons and humans, some of the game's most often used enemies. Just in general, a good quality of life to have. Rinko also has an SR weapon that gives a large amount of increased damage against demons, so having a summon like this will just make her pop those nasty demonic pimples. Moving on to blue supporters, there's a lot for Rinko to love since her stable build is all about blues. They're mostly defensive or healing solutions, but there's a few scattered about to make up all the difference. Oniguro Saburo is first up. Her sub skill at base level gives 22% increased damage against demons. A generally flat increase to damage against a type is wonderful for specific time attacks, specific tower floors, and events featuring specific types for bosses. Not only does Oniguma make Rinko do more damage, on usage, it unleashes a close range snare and holds enemies in place for 3 seconds. That's a millennia for Rinko, and that time is for bursting. Hiragi Fuyumi is a really nice supporter for Rinko, as the sub skill gives reduced damage from melee attacks by 14% and increased melee damage by 7% at one copy. And that's just fine. It's good to put her in the back line, and the call is even pretty useful too. It's a delayed explosion that knocks enemies into the air where they stood. It's a nuke and a way to slow down enemies to let Rinko in for her best shot. Rinko herself is also a supporter too. Her sub skill is a reduced damage taken from range attacks and a 10% chance to take 45% less damage from any attack. That's not very good. However, when you put Rinko in the main slot, her main skill passive can activate. That is, dealing damage to all enemies every 5 seconds on a 30% chance. And the active move is just Spatial Ren that does damage. It supplements everything Rinko wants to accomplish like it's a bad habit. Another one is the Mecha Murasaki supporter. This is just a flat out fantastic supporter in general due to the amount of utility it has on anybody. The sub skill increases HP, restores a percent of HP every 7 seconds, but it won't recover if you go below 15% of your max health. You can't use it to turtle too hard now. Then when activated, it creates a spatial rend on the location casted and pulls enemies into it while dealing damage over time. Then after 3 seconds, a bombardment occurs and the enemies will take damage. All while this is going on, Rinko can get a massive boost to particle charge. One good normal attack chain will just skyrocket her particles and just let her spam her ultimate for days. This is also grouping all the enemies together to get a big blaster combo off without a hitch. Onward to notable reds. Kuonji R. Spika is one of the most desirable for her or for anyone. Spika gives increased crit chance when equipped to melee characters and increased crit damage when equipped to range. It's an absolutely great supporter as it lets Rinko do more damage over time. However, there's another benefit to Spika that really sells her. On usage in battle, she fires off a bubble that does damage, and also as soon as the usage occurs, the character is invincible for up to 14 seconds. That is an absolutely enormous boon and should not be scoffed off ever. Useful at any stage of the game, welcomed in any composition. 
Kikuchi Aoi has similar effects to another supporter, but this time in red. The sub skill is a reduction in melee damage taken, and also reduces supporter skill to cooldowns. Not a whole lot of supporters do such things, so it's welcome to see it when it happens. On call, it snares all enemies and deals damage to them, once again, enabling Rinko to get her skills off and have hopefully sopping them up a bit so the burst is that much more effective. Kanazuki Sora is another to take note. Her sub skill is a blast to a random enemy after any skill usage, a perfect thing to have on bosses and one on one battles with other Timonins. Rinko loves her skills, so she'll just start vomiting auxiliary blasts. The call gets things interesting. Upon usage, a defense down buff is applied to all enemies. It's no slouch either. At base level, it's a 40% defense down. The max is 80. Whatever is in Rinko's way after using that will just cease to exist. Now the disclaimer is that these supporters are almost all limited, whether through the gacha or a past event. The game is weird about reruns, but it's still young. Let's give it some time. To conclude, Rinko's gameplay accomplishes what she looks like on paper. She's a sleek, fast, powerful swordsman who stylishly slices through enemies and leaves nothing behind but a mess. I mean, anything for the mission, right? She even has a healing skill which is just fantastic. It really elevates her into someone that can hang in there with some of the game's best characters. Amazing to see something as simple as a healing making the difference. Good health and survivability makes for an easier time on the content ladder, from starting out leveling to the tower's hardest floors. Ringo can join them. Albeit, it's not a super powerful heal, but it is better than a lot of the characters who don't even have one. The popularity aspect loses steam too, since Kirara, one of the most popular characters in the moment across the franchise, doesn't get a healing skill, yet Rinko does. Rinko, however, is a well of power. She doesn't have too many notable ailments, so she goes in full steam ahead and just uses all her strength to take out anything in her path. It's really shown in her skills as barely anything gives an ailment. It's all about getting Rinko up and making her hit as hard as possible in tiny windows. And if she has the supporters, the costumes, the weapons, the magatamas, the skill trainings, she can do it. However, when the burst is all said and done, she's charging up to take another smack at him. She's just a regular swordsman. She sees herself as not a god of the blade or destroyer of worlds. She's just herself and wants to accomplish the task at hand. It comes forth in her play style and that she's efficient and direct. And the only thing that she doesn't mince is her words. She works hard so you don't have to. And that's wonderful in a game that has everything stacked against you. Who oh lord, it wasn't that something. Thanks for coming on out and learning with your boy Hardcorn. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment too because I'd love to hear from you guys and maybe get some ideas from where to go next. And as always, I'll see you next time.